Hello and welcome. I'm really excited about today's video because this is information that will help you better understand your body and the anxiety you might be battling. My old self, I was confused. I was experiencing all of these different sensations, symptoms, and I was uneducated about my anxiety. So this video, I want to tackle the two pathways that can cause anxiety. This is something we should have been taught in school at a very early age because, well, in life, we're going to confront chaos. We're going to experience extreme anxiety at some point, right? And it's better to know what's happening inside so that when chaos does come, you can better navigate this uncertainty. So the first thing I'm talking about is this ancient part of the brain called the amygdala. Now the amygdala is, uh, it's more primitive. It's very, very old and it's located in the, in the center of the brain. Now this amygdala is your alarm bell. This is what's required for the anxiety response. This is the anxiety response. This is the head honcho. This is part of the 95% of who you are, your unconscious mind. That's why it's hard to, to articulate and rationalize the experience when you're in anxiety mode because this part of the brain just takes over. It's, it's, it's way more sophisticated than you, than your rational brain, which is your cortex. So let's start off with the amygdala. The amygdala is made up of thousands of circuits of cells. The role of the amygdala is to attach emotional significance to objects and situations and to form emotional memories around them. And they, those memories can be positive or they can be negative. The cortex, it can trigger your anxiety. You can think your way into anxiety. You can imagine your way into anxiety, but the amygdala is required for anxiety. Just like I said before at the beginning. Now here's a side note that you might find interesting. Anti-anxiety medications, like Clonopin, Xanax, uh, Ativan. These medications, they sedate the amygdala. It, it's temporary numbing. And what's really important to understand here is that they do not change the circuits. What does that mean? Well, the amygdala, it makes emotional attachments over certain situations and objects, right? So associations. So say you associate this particular experience with fear. The anti-anxiety medications, they do not solve the problem. They do not break the association. They just numb you of the association, but the problem is still there. The problem is still there. And that's why I don't agree with anti-anxiety medications. Sure, they have some use in some areas, but overall, my opinion of them, they do not solve the underlying associations. The amygdala, it receives information before the more evolved part of our brains, the cortex. Now, we receive uh, outside information through our five senses, sight, smell, touch, feel, taste, right? And the amygdala perceives that before the cortical brain. And, you know, they, the, the amygdala can connect any one of those five senses with fear. I, like one of the big examples for me was smelling something that brought me back to my childhood, right? There's a lot of stories that I've come across of people who suffered from trauma from, from childhood 
and a smell would trigger their fear. The smell would trigger the emotional memory within the amygdala and then they would relive the emotion, relive the fear, relive the trauma without without analyzing the, the association from the cortex. Because remember, the amygdala takes over all other brain processes. It has longer lasting memory than the cortical brain. That's so cool. And a great question to ask yourself in order to, to kind of figure out those associations made by the amygdala is to ask, was there an experience that could have taught me to fear this particular situation? Now, an object that can activate your amygdala. All that's required is that the object is experienced at the same time an overwhelming or very stimulating event is activating the amygdala. So when you're out in the shopping mall and you have a panic attack and you leave, the act of leaving and reacting so strongly to the environment, the amygdala is making associations to the environment, to the shopping mall, to the smells, the, the, the just the overall, the overall feeling of the place. And then you go into another situation, like you go to a concert, you go to a classroom, and then you experience anxiety. The amygdala has already made associations with them all. Now in the classroom, the amygdala goes, oh, remember Brad? Uh, this is a place where you could feel trapped and judged by people just like the shopping mall. This is a situation similar to that environment. And then your anxiety activates and you don't even know why, right? There are certain situations in the environment that the amygdala has attached fear to like objects, um, senses, uh, and just the overall experience, there are associations that have been made, which is really interesting. So let's talk about the cortical pathway that can lead to anxiety. Now, in our new, more evolved part of the brain, it's divided into two hemispheres. The left hemisphere processes words, language. That's where we rationalize. That's where that internal voice, you know, is communicating to ourselves, right? Like, like engaging in that rational internal voice. But then the right hemisphere, that's where we start to imagine things, right? So like when you're a kid and you go into a dark room, doesn't your mind populate itself with images of potential threats like monsters, spiders, burglars, right? In that environment, in that dark room. So imagine the right hemisphere is processing order. I mean, sorry, chaos, right? Because when you go out into the unknown, the brain populates itself with potential threats like images. And then the left hemisphere is more of the you know, that's where we, that's where we can uh, make the order into something known by engaging in rational dialogue. So engaging in that voice, calming ourselves down by that self-talk, that soothing self-talk. So we can make sense of the chaos by our left hemisphere, the more rational part of our brain. But we can, we can trigger our anxiety by the self-talk, right? We can say, oh my God, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? And then that can produce anxiety. And then the images from our right hemisphere, definitely, right? We imagine ourselves in that situation and that produces the fear and those sensations. So we can work with this new part of our brain to ease anxiety but in this video, I want, wanted to address how this part of the brain can activate your amygdala because the cortex, you know, it's linked to the amygdala. So if you think about, you know, distressing thoughts, if you think and imagine distressing images, 
you're going to feel the emotion. Lastly, I just want to conclude this video by mentioning the hallmark of all psychotherapy is gradual exposure to what you most fear. That's where the healing takes place, right? So if you, if you fear a certain situation, it's important that you start to pick that situation apart. You can do that in many ways. You can write about it. You can, uh, you know, go on Google and look at images of the situation you fear. You can show up at the, at the event or the situation and, you know, slowly move your way closer and closer into the, the thick of that anxiety until your amygdala makes new associations because that's the hallmark of psychotherapy is you, you want your amygdala to make those new associations to, to become bored of the thing that you are squeamish about that's making you uncomfortable, right? This is not about coping or numbing, right? This is about changing the associations. And I do that in my coaching practice. So we, we figure out, okay, what's, what, where are those situations? Because a lot of the time, most of the time, the client doesn't know, they can't use their rational brain to, to, to uh, recall those the the associations we have to go back okay what where, like what was happening at that time of your in your life when you were feeling most anxious and uncomfortable and then they would start to bring about these situations and then the the client will go oh i'm starting to realize th the connection here and i'm like yeah that's because you know these emotional memories are coming from a deeper part of your brain the amygdala and now that you're you're using your cortical brain to, to fish them out of your unconscious mind. Now you're starting to realize the bigger picture, the big associations now. And now that you know the big associations, let's expose you to those situations gradually so that you can make new associations. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's Video. Thank you so much, everybody, for leaving your comments, joining the community. Um, I really appreciate you being here. Remember, rise above anxiety. I will see you on the next video. Bye for now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell so that whenever a new video of mine appears, you will be one of the first to know. Namaste.